We ended our last class as Britain and France finally declared war on Hitler's Germany. Europe, and also the United States, had stood by as Japan swallowed Manchuria, as Italy swallowed Ethiopia, as Hitler's Germany swallowed Austria, and then the Sudetenland, and finally all of Czechoslovakia. The invasion of Poland, however, proved to be the final straw. So, here's a map of the invasion of Poland. You see the path of the German army into western Poland. Those are the gray areas, uh, and the yellow territory is the territory that Germany conquered. But what are those red arrows, and what is that sort of salmon-colored areas? What's going on? Well, in 1939, Hitler's Germany was not the only country invading Poland, and Germany didn't take all of Poland yet. Nazis and communists were supposed to be implacable enemies. Remember, there were those in the West who put up with Hitler because they hoped he would prove a useful counterweight to Stalin's Russia. But Hitler and Stalin had, as this cartoon indicates, a common interest. They had both lost territory in Eastern Europe at the end of World War I. They were both eager to expand their borders. So despite their deep mutual suspicion, in August 1938, a month before Germany invaded Poland, Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia signed a secret pact. Basically, they agreed to split Eastern Europe between themselves. So when Germany invaded Poland from the west, Russia invaded Poland from the east. This is a famous cartoon. What's it saying? And who is the person lying prone between the two? Remember the Schlieffen Plan, the German general staff strategy for defeating France in World War I before Russia had time to get in the war? Well, we know Russia wasn't in the war at this point. In fact, there's every indication that Stalin thought he had made a permanent deal with Hitler. But uh, other than that, the Schlieffen Plan worked remarkably well in World War II. By May of 1940, Europe had been at war for nine months. But Britain and France, even though they declared war on Germany in September of 1939, really hadn't seen any real fighting. This period is sometimes referred to as the phony war. But the phony war came to an abrupt end on the 10th of May 1940 when Germany launched an invasion of France and the Low Countries. By the end of the month, Germany had conquered the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. So this was basically the original World War I plan, only it was a lot more ambitious and it was a whole lot more successful. In less than a month, the British army was trapped between the German army and the English Channel, and there was a real danger that the entire British army would be captured. So it followed was one of the really great stories of World War II, a very dramatic episode. So let's watch a short video clip that shows actual footage from the evacuation of Dunkirk. So you've seen these two pie graphs before. World War I was unbelievably brutal to the men fighting in the trenches. World War II was even more unbelievably brutal to civilians. You know now about the horrors of the Holocaust, but there was another reason besides Nazi genocide why civilians suffered so terribly in World War II. Actually, there were many reasons, but what was another important reason that grew out of the technology that we began to see in World War I? Yes, air power, the attack from the air. So let's look at a couple of video clips from the next documentary in the People's Century series, this one entitled Total War. Here first we see civilians beginning to prepare for the horrors ahead, kind of a comic note. The attacks when they came were actually even worse than people had feared. We're going to see a video clip about Germany's attack on Britain, nicknamed the Blitz. This photo, however, is actually from Hamburg, Germany, from air assaults by the Allies, and it shows civilians who took shelter uh, in air raid shelters and then basically died of suff suffocation as firestorms swept through the city and raised temperatures above a thousand degrees. Finally, Hitler made a fatal mistake. With all of Western Europe except Britain under Nazi control, and with America still trying to stay neutral, on June 22, 1941, Adolf Hitler launched his armies eastward in a massive invasion of the Soviet Union. 
basically defying, obviously, the pact he had signed with Stalin. And again, Stalin was so astonished by this that he hid for several days. And finally, his generals found him and rousted him and said, we have to fight this war. And they did. So Hitler sent three great army groups with over 3 million German soldiers, 150 divisions, and 3,000 tanks into Russia. The invasion covered a front that stretched across 2,000 miles. The German army was at the top of its form. Hitler had succeeded where his World War I predecessors had failed. Why shouldn't he succeed where Napoleon had failed? But he didn't. The key battle in Hitler's fight to conquer Russia, and in the view of many historians, the turning point battle of World War II, came in the winter of 1942 to 1943. After months of bloody fighting and even more deaths from cold and starvation, the Germans were forced to surrender. 91,000 German soldiers were taken prisoner, and perhaps most important of all, the belief that Hitler was invincible, that he simply could not be defeated was shattered. So let's watch a brief video clip from the History Channel about the Battle of Stalingrad. There's also in your readings a brief excerpt from a German soldier's memoirs. It could have been written by one of Napoleon's soldiers. So here's an important lesson from this course. Avoid the temptation to invade Russia. Of course, the other huge turning point in the war had come a year earlier when Japan bombed Pearl Harbor and brought America into the war. American soldiers made a huge difference in the war, both in Europe and in the Pacific War against Japan, but arguably America's biggest contribution, and another way that World War II really became a total war, was the United States' unprecedented industrial mobilization. So let's return to the People's Century video, and I want you to think about how this began to transform the role of women. Okay. I am skipping over huge chunks of this very interesting war. The desperate fighting in China and across Asia, for example, the battles for North Africa and then for Italy. But if Stalingrad was the turning point, D-Day or the invasion of France was the point when the war in Europe was won. So let's watch a video clip about the D-Day landing and then read a really gruesome account of the first hour of the invasion. <clears throat> In Asia, the United States and its allies fought island by island to take back the Pacific from Japan. American military leaders estimated that an invasion of Japan would cost 1.2 million American casualties. And so they decided first that they would try their deadly new secret weapon, the atomic bomb. On August 6th, Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima, and on August 9th, Fat Man was dropped on Nagasaki. You see some photos here on the left is Hiroshima. On the right is one of the many victims of this bombing. On September 2nd, 1945, Japan surrendered and World War II was over. So here's the final body count and one last video clip summing up the way in which World War II was so terribly different from the already terrible war that preceded it. The video clip ends with refugees struggling to get home. In a way, my own personal history begins with another World War II homecoming. So our last reading for this unit is a very personal one for me. It's a letter that my father wrote from his hospital bed after being liberated from a German POW camp. We'll turn to that now. <laughs> 